ASAP Science did a very, very good video on nice guys, and he tried to go about it differently. Instead of using emotion or using anecdotes, so ethos or pathos, he's trying to bring in some logos. He's brought in game theory. So I'm gonna explain what he did. He's using something called tit for tat, which is a way to approach the prisoner's dilemma. And I'm gonna explain the prisoner's dilemma, and then I'm gonna explain tit for tat, and then I'm gonna explain why this game theoretical way of explaining why nice guys do finish first is not exactly correct. So let's go and let's nerd out. Two people face off against each other with two different cards in their hands. One says cooperate and the other says defect. Each round, both players pick one of the cards and play it face down without the other knowing which they've chosen. If both players choose cooperate, then they each win $300. If both players play defect, then they both lose $10. But if one person plays cooperate and the other plays defect, the person who played defect wins $500 and the cooperate card loses $100. So let us start here. Player A, player B, cooperate, defect, cooperate, defect. If I'm player B and I choose to cooperate, player A, if he or she cooperates with me, we both get 300 bucks. Now, if he defects, I lose 100 bucks, he gets 500 bucks. Now, if I defect, it's the same thing. If I defect and he cooperates, I get 500 bucks, he loses 100 bucks. If we both defect, we get, there's an assumption here that ASAP Science didn't explain. The assumption is player A and player B are both rational. They both know that each other are rational. They also know the rules of the game. So they both know the rules of the game and they both know that the other side knows the rules of the game. You have to have these conditions met for this prisoner's dilemma to occur because ultimately the prisoner's dilemma is a dilemma of rationality. So with that being known, now if I cooperate, I can't trust that he will not defect because 300 bucks compared to 500 bucks, he or she is most likely going to take the 500 bucks knowing they're rational. Now he thinking from my angle, if he or she chooses to cooperate, I'm picking between 500 bucks and 300 bucks, so of course I'm gonna pick 500 bucks. So knowing we both know each other, we both know the rules, we both know we're rational, we both know we, we're thinking about each other, the only logical option is to pick defect. And we end up both screwed. We both keep losing negative 10, so we both keep losing money. Hence the prisoner's dilemma, because we wanna end up here, but we end up here. And the winner was one called Tit for Tat. It was programmed to always start with cooperate, and after that it would copy the last move of its opponent. So if your opponent defects, then the next time you defect. If they cooperate, then you cooperate next time. So now we have a strategy called Tit for Tat, which is very popular in game theory. Tit for Tat. What it means is, as ASAP Science says, you start out nice, as in you always start out cooperating, you follow what the opponent does. In other words, if the opponent in the previous round chooses to cooperate, you cooperate. If the opponent in the previous round chooses to defect, you defect. But you don't hold any grudges. So if the opponent defects, and then you defect the next round, and then the opponent cooperates the round that you defect, then you cooperate again the next round. In other words, you only follow what the opponent does the previous round. So ASAP Science, following game theorists findings say that tit for tat is the best strategy but i'm just laying out some other strategies that could be used against tit for tat and i just don't see tit for tat as being the best strategy so here are some examples i assume there's knowledge there's mutual knowledge of strategy i don't know see that's the part i don't know about these tests they did in life, if you're trying to use game theory to simulate life, the problem is in life, people are dynamic. People figure each other's strategies. So if you apply tit for tat in the real world, I don't think it is actually the best strategy. So let's take a look. I have two examples. The first example and the second example, the player B is doing tit for tat. Now in the first example, Player A is an asshole. He never cooperates. He always defects. 
So player B is tit for tat, he's nice the first round, he gets fucked over, and then he defects because the previous round, the asshole defect, and of course he's an asshole, so the asshole's gonna continue to defect, and you see, at the end of the day, the asshole still gets more. It's gonna be more nuanced because most people in life, they're gonna adapt, right? So they keep defecting, they'll realize, oh shit, maybe I need to put on a guide, so maybe they'll cooperate, and then the next round, he'll cooperate, and then maybe they'll cooperate for a little bit, right? That's the assumption. But by starting out nice, you're already lost because the asshole already gained, and it's, it's gonna be hard to catch up to him, that initial gain. So this is the problem with if you're dealing with pure assholes. Now in this example, I call it the backstabber. You start out tit for tat, your player B, and then, you know, this person, they cooperate for a while, but then somewhere along the line, he backstabs you, right? He defects, and you're tit for tat, so you defect, and then he de he's continuing to defect, he's backstabbed you, and then you just follow the previous round, and you keep defecting. And again, in this case, you see, because he backstabbed you, he got the extra 500. You got negative 100, so the backstabber still comes out ahead. So I don't get why tit for tat is superior in this case. The thing about tit for tat is it can work in certain ideal situations. And I will show you guys two situations where tit for tat can work. In fact, one of the ways tit for tat can work is if both people start out cooperating and then continue being nice. So in other words, the nice guy strategy of always cooperating is in a way a subset of the tit for tat strategy. This next example up here is what I call bros. Whether you borrow money from each other or you help each other when the, it's time of need, this is kind of, a lot of times friendships are like this. You bust your balls, like he busts your balls, you bust his balls, you go out to a bar, Sometimes you take one for the team and go for the ugly girl while he gets the hot girl and then you switch it up the next day. So this is what I call the bro strategy. So you're both tit for tat, but player A modifies the tit for tat by defecting the first time. And because you're only following each other, every round you get 500 and then the next round you alternate losing 100. So after two rounds, you each always get 400. So this is a very genius way of using tit for tat, and I think a lot of bros, a lot of good friends do this, you know? When needed, we give up something for each other, but ultimately, we both still come off on top. We both get 400, 400, 400. Now this one, this is the ultimate nice guy behavior, right? If, if you're playing with a nice guy, you do tit for tat. You always start out cooperating, and then you follow each other's previous round. You're always cooperating, so you always get 300, and this is the best benefit of all. But of course, life isn't that simple. What I think we found here is that the initial conditions matter. If the initial conditions favor not cooperating and being an asshole, then you never have an incentive to play the tit for tat's game, right? The first round, if you defected and he's playing nice and you gained enough that you keep defecting, and and you're always still ahead, why would you do anything different, right? So the initial conditions really matter, and that's what tit for tat doesn't take into account for. So I think life is a lot more complicated, and trying to use tit for tat to justify nice guy behavior, it's just not good enough. I think if you wanted to really use tit for tat, you would have to make it much more complicated and do some sort of formula to take into account your initial assessment of whoever you're playing the game with. So by the person's previous game outcomes, if you're able to figure out, okay, this person has a 70% chance of, let's say, defecting the first round, then when I'm playing tit for tat, I have a 70% chance. So I literally roll a dice or flip a coin or do something, I have a 70% chance of also defecting that first round just to protect myself. I think this is something you have to take into account with tit for tat. Now, the problem with this is that sometimes maybe you meet new people who you don't have any kind of assessment of. So, you know, you don't know how they played games in the past. You don't know how they've gone through life. So, ultimately, I don't have a good answer for it. Maybe the answer is, as technology, as 
Everything gets better. Humans get better at analyzing each other. We have machines to help us. Maybe we'll have some sort of statistical analysis of every single personality attribute for people in the future, and it'll help us adopt the right strategies as to how to talk and interact with them. But that gets a little Gattaca if you've seen that movie. That's a little Gattaca. So I don't have an answer to this question. All I know is if you try to use tit for tat to justify nice guy behavior, I think it's a little too simple because if the initial conditions are not right, tit for tat doesn't always win out. That's just from our few examples. I think we could see those first two examples. So I get it statistically, most people aren't going to just always defect or once they defect, they continue to defect. You know, they're going to try to adjust based on your behavior. So in that case, tit for tat is the best solution potentially. But you have to remember in life, there are people who no matter what, they will defect, no matter what, they're always gonna be an asshole. So being tit for tat with that type of behavior is not gonna work. So that's my little rant. And ASAP Science, I love you a lot, but I studied game theory in college a little bit, and whenever I see people use game theory, I wanna scrutinize it. So I look forward to your comments etc so for everyone watching thank you guys so much i know you guys have wanted another game theory video for a while so this is my game theory video thank you guys so much leave a comment press a like blah 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 blah